and the rest of the language services industry. So let's get started. Uh, so what is interpreting? Well, interpreting really is a specific type or kind of translation. We know from our previous discussions in class that translation applies to the translation of written documents or text documents. Interpreting, on the other hand, is the oral translation of spoken discourse. So written versus oral, text versus speech. There are primarily two modes of interpreting that we're going to talk more about in this video. The first is simultaneous. That's when the interpreter interprets while the speaker is speaking with no pauses. And the second primary mode is consecutive interpreting. That's when the interpreter interprets between pauses. There may be two different parties. One speaks, there's a pause for the interpreter, then the other speaks, there's a pause for the interpreter. That's consecutive mode. We'll talk more about these in just a sec. I also wanted to um, note here at the outset that it's kind of important for us as translators, students of translation, interpreters, to make this distinction and to educate our clients and the general public about the difference between translation and translators and interpreting or interpretation and interpreters. Just vocabulary, throw this in real quick. En español, translation, traducción, translator, traductor o traductora, and interpreting, interpretación, and interpreter is el o la interprete. Okay, moving on. So, promise that we talk about the two modes of translation. First up, simultaneous interpreting. I'm sorry, two modes of interpreting. First up, simultaneous interpreting, okay? In simultaneous interpreting, or SI, the interpreter renders the message in the target language as close to, in as close to real time as possible. So there might be a half second delay or a full second delay max. So you're really listening and trying to keep up with that speaker. Um, we're also gonna make a distinction in this, in this short lesson between unidirectional, that's one way, language A to B, and bidirectional communication, in other words, back and forth. When you're doing simultaneous interpreting, like in a booth at a conference like this, you can see in the image, you're interpreting in a unidirectional manner, language A to B. You're going straight to your listener and you're not doing any go-between. Simultaneous interpreting is used most, as you can see in this picture, um, in a conference setting or where somebody might giving a, be giving a speech or an address. You're interpreting what that person's saying to the audience. Um, and to do that, typically you need special equipment and your audience needs special equipment, such as you'll be in a soundproof booth perhaps, or way back at the back of the room, uh, you'll have a headset with a microphone and maybe some um, interface with software to help you interpret and your listeners will be using your phones or a headset as well. So the special equipment that you can see in this, in this image, that's simultaneous interpreting. And of course, ideally, just as with translation, uh, simultaneous interpreters are working into their native language. Uh, the second primary mode of interpreting is the consecutive mode, consecutive interpreting or CI. In consecutive interpreting, the interpreter does not um, interpret in real time exactly, but instead interprets during pauses. So somebody speaks for a few seconds, ideally, then there's a pause and you repeat what the person said in the target language. Um, so we talked about unidirectional in one direction or bidirectional. And consecutive interpreting can, can happen in both ways. It can be unidirectional, so you're interpreting for an audience, or it can be bidirectional in which you are acting as a bilingual go-between or mediator. So interpreting from language A into B, but also from language B back into A. So that's, that's characteristic of consecutive interpreting. Um, in consecutive interpreting, the interpreter relies on his or her memory or may be able to take notes while the speaker is talking and then refer down to those notes when during the pause when they interpret. So there are some note taking techniques that interpreters learn and practice. Those are those are critical to being a good consecutive interpreter. So you have your memory, but you also have notes Any notes you're able to take quickly. Um, so as opposed to um, simultaneous interpreting in CI consecutive, um, you're not using any special communications equipment typically. No headset, no microphone, no soundproof proof booth, right? You're standing relatively closely to the person that you're interpreting for, okay? And you're speaking during pauses. So those are the two modes, simultaneous and consecutive. There are a couple other modes which are related. Um, one of them, as you can see pictured here, where you have the two interpreters leaning over the shoulder and interpreting for these two politicians. 
um, I believe it's uh, Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan. This is called whispered interpreting or chuchotage. It's a form of simultaneous interpreting usually in which no special equipment's available or desired. Instead, the interpreter sits or stands next to the person needing the service and whispers. That's why it's called whispered interpreting or chuchotage. Um, another fairly common type of interpreting is what is called escort or liaison interpreting. In this mode, the interpreter accompanies a traveling person or group and facilitates communication between them and speakers of the local language, usually working bi-directionally. So they're going back and forth from language A into B, from B back into A, often over the course of several hours or even several days. So you're accompanying a group or a delegation. Um, depending on the situation, you may be using this chuchotage where you're whispering in their ears or even um, a form of uh, consecutive interpreting, interpreting in pauses. Sight translation is another mode, kind of a hybrid between translation and interpreting because in sight translation, you are doing uh, an on the spot oral translation of a written document of a text. So think about in a deposition or a legal proceeding, criminal, criminal or civil, where as the interpreter, you're handed a piece of evidence that might be uh, a document and you're asked by the attorneys or by the judge to interpret, say what it says. So interpret from language A to language B on the spot, um, orally, going from text to speech. That's sight translation. Uh, finally, a less common one, but I, I mentioned it, uh, relay interpreting is when you have material interpreted from the source language into one target language, and then from that target language, you interpret to another target language. So you go, English to Spanish, Spanish to French, French to German. That would be a relay scenario, okay? So in what contexts does interpreting happen in the real world? Where do interpreters work? Well, the first three or four um, contexts on this slide are the primary ones. Obviously, you have medical interpreting, interpreting settings such as hospitals and clinics. Um, you have legal interpreting, so settings like trials, hearings, uh, depositions, right? criminal and civil uh, proceedings. Of course, you have conference interpreting where you're interpreting for this speaker at a conference, also seminars, everything from United Nation assemblies to meetings of trade associations, bunch of doctors getting together, a bunch of lawyers getting together, a bunch of businessmen getting together at a conference. Um, conference interpreting is that um, primarily um, simultaneous mode. And then of course, community interpreting is, is very common. Um, so those are settings such as social work visits, um, discussions in schools, clinics, victim services, child protective services, settings like that out in the community, um, churches, okay? So very common where you have populations of speakers of languages um, other than English primarily. And of course, there are some other contexts that involve the need for interpreting and interpreters um, in business, right? Meetings, negotiations, you'll sometimes see in media events, press conferences, there might be an interpreter, even in everyday situations, um, informal, low, st low stakes um, kinds of um, situations that you might encounter in your own personal life as a bilingual person, where you might want to step in and help someone that needs interpreting. Um, one of the final things I wanna talk about in the video is, how does the skill set differ between translators and interpreters? This helps to explain a little bit, the content on this slide here, helps to explain a little bit why language services professionals tend to emphasize or only work in one arena or the other, or primarily in one or the other, because it really takes two almost completely different skill sets that you really have to develop. You have to focus on one or the other. Look at the blue, the text in the blue box down here in the lower right first, um, because both translators and interpreters need these two things, native like proficiency in the source and target languages, and typically specialization in at least one area of expertise that's recommended. So if you're a translator, you may specialize in financial documents or business finance stuff. I said that already, financial documents um, or medical documents. If you're an interpreter, you're typically gonna be either a legal interpreter or a um, medical interpreter or some sort of specialization, okay? All right, let's look at this, the skill sets really quick and compare. Translators need to be need to have excellent reading comprehension skills, whereas interpreters need excellent listening skills. So you can see sort of the contrast. Translators also need great textual analysis skills, excellent writing skills, strong research skills, 
They need good technology skills because in translation you have the benefit of a little bit more time, although you have deadlines, of course, um, but you're able to use computer assisted translation, CAT tools, and other tech resources, online resources, digital resources. Um, interpreters, as I mentioned, you have to have really good listening skills because you have to interpret sometimes with very little pause if you're doing consecutive or almost no pause if you're doing simultaneous. You need excellent speaking skills. By that I mean clear enunciation, like I'm trying to do in this video, being able to project your voice so that everyone can hear, being able to quickly arrange right speech into effective discourse. You need good interpersonal skills. You need to be, you understand um, nonverbal behavior, different social cues and things like that. Um, you need deep cultural and sociolinguistic knowledge. I think that applies as well to, um, to translation. But interpreters absolutely have to have excellent memory, recall, and note-taking skills. Um, so if you look at the resources, I skipped a line here, translators and interpreters have different resources that are available. Translators have, again, the benefit of time, despite the deadlines, they can look words up in dictionaries, they can use different CAT tools, machine translation, translation memory, term management, parallel text alignment tools, ask a native speaker in an online forum, etc. Whereas interpreters don't have that benefit because they're working so fast, they can only rely on their experience, their memory, and their notes. So these are some of the primary differences between the skill sets that translators need to develop and interpreters need to develop. All right, let's recap and maybe mention a couple new ideas. Um, we know that now that interpreting is the oral translation of spoken discourse, so generally no textual material involved. There may be forms and stuff like that you, that you have to cite translate. We talked about the two main modes, simultaneous and consecutive. We talked about the fact that interpreting can be unidirectional, where the interpreter is interpreting into one language only for the audience, or bidirectional, where the interpreter is translating bilingually from language A into B and then from B back into A. Translators a go-between. We talked about the many formal, professional, and informal low-stakes contexts for interpreting, right? The most frequent being medical, legal, community, and conference interpreting. Um, just wanted to add that typically out in the real world language services industry, legal and medical interpreters need to be and usually are certified to get work. Um, interpreters usually work into their strongest language, in other words, their native language. And as we just mentioned, the skill sets for interpreters and translators are quite different. So hopefully you found this information to be useful and informative. That pretty much um, is all I wanted to present for now. And now you know at least the basics about what it means to be an interpreter.